Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and I am burning a fall candle because I feel like it is almost fall. I'm really embracing the fall vibes right now. It is currently like August 23rd or something. Let me actually look. Oh, it's the 29th. I'm just kidding. I did not know what date it was. It's August 29th right now and I'm coming at you guys today with seven really, really fun DIY projects. Perfect for your home, perfect for your room, perfect for whatever space you have really. And if you came across this video randomly and you do not know what I do or my videos, um, here on Lone Fox, I do home decor and DIY content every single week. Um, and you can also subscribe below and make sure to click that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. That way you are notified every time I post brand new videos because you need your daily dose of DIY here on the Lone Fox channel. Now, before jumping into the projects today, guys, I do want to mention that these are actually projects that were featured on my Drew Scott YouTube channel, which I still do have. I have a fashion channel, if you guys do not know. It was my first ever channel here on YouTube, and I actually started to incorporate a ton of DIY and a ton of home content into that channel before. Before I ever started Lone Fox, which is the channel you're on currently. So I ended up actually splitting my channels, which is where Lone Fox was born. And so I basically took off a lot of my DIY videos on that fashion channel, but I still want to repurpose some of that content. So I'm taking a lot of the videos and actually compiling them into one right here. This is going to be one of the last kind of compiled videos that feature projects that I've done in the past. So there is a slight, slight chance that you might recognize one or two of these projects from videos that I've done years ago, if you happen to have been searching years ago. But I I feel like they're still gonna be super fresh because I have updated them with brand new voiceovers. I re-edited the entire thing um, and I just made it feel a lot more current and fresh for you guys. So I'm featuring seven really fun DIY projects. And the reason I'm kind of uploading this one right now is because I am working on the most insane apartment makeover for you guys. It is a full apartment, a bedroom, living room, kitchen, bathroom, and it has been taking up so much of my time. So I thought this was just gonna be a nice little filler for you guys that still is great quality content, but didn't require me to, you know, like go and film a full on video where I need to go to Ikea and do this and that because this apartment makeover that I'm doing is literally going to be crazy. It's going to be three parts. Get ready for it. I think you guys are going to be super excited. That was a long little preface for you guys, um, but let's just jump into today's project and you're going to see why exactly I wanted to repurpose this and let this content live on on this channel. The supplies for this first project are super minimal. All I'm gonna be using is some cement, some Mod Podge, a wooden tissue box holder, and a paintbrush. So I'm starting off by taking my Mod Podge and I'm actually going to be mixing the cement powder with the Mod Podge. And this cement powder is super affordable at any hardware store, Home Depot, wherever it might be. It can be just quite heavy when you buy it in a bag. And I'm mixing it up to create almost this like glue-like cement texture. And I'm just using this very coarse brush to paint it on the outside of a wooden tissue box holder. This one is from Michaels. You can find them really anywhere and they're only a couple of dollars um, in the raw wood section at your craft store. So I just gave this a nice coating. You could also do it with water, but I just felt like the Mod Podge created a nice sticking element. So I was able to really layer up the concrete on the outside and let it dry in between each layer to create a perfect cement tissue box. Next up, we are just going to be using a bowl, some macrame cording, and a pair of scissors to create a macrame planter out of a bowl. This is a project that I featured on my channel before, but it's an oldie but a goodie, so I figured why not re-share it with you guys. This one is really great, so I started off with eight six-foot strands of the macrame cord, and I tied them in a knot at the bottom and then separated them into two strand sections, almost in a plus sign. And then what I'm doing is creating a first set of square knots in all of these strand sections. So in one strand section, I'm doing a square knot and a square square knot is right over left, left over right. Um, and I'm doing this about two and a half, three inches from our initial knot that we created to attach all the cordings. And then using the neighboring strands, I'm creating another square knot about the same distance away, about two inches away. And as you can see here, this is where it comes in with my little saying, it's pretty self-explanatory if you see what I'm doing, but you kind of have to watch what I'm doing. And then you can place your bowl on top and see exactly how many more knots you need to do. So I actually created an, another set of knots with the neighboring strands about seven inches from the initial ones. This is just going to cradle that bowl a little bit nicer. And then I wanted to add a bit more of a decorative element. So all you have to do to create this decorative element is repeat the square knot. So you're gonna go right over left, left over right, right over left, left over right. And it's gonna create this nice little macrame section um, on all four strands. And when you're completely done, you can actually tie all of the strands together at the top in a knot. And there is your planter. Mm -hmm. 
This next project is a super cute way to display your Polaroids or pictures. I'm just using some clay, some gold leaf, and a paintbrush. So this is the Fimo Soft Clay, which is just a nice, soft, malleable clay to work with from the craft store. And I'm starting by taking about a quarter of the chunk of clay, and I'm just massaging it in my fingers. And I like to work with clay on top of wax paper or parchment paper just so it doesn't stick. And I'm kind of creating a pyramid shape, and I'm just shaping this with my fingers. You can actually use whatever you'd like. And I'm using a small piece of dental floss to actually create the incision down the middle of this piece, which is going to be the slot that you can insert your photo or whatever you want to put in there. Um, I actually created another one as well with a slot on the side. So you can really just kind of get creative with where you want to put those or the shapes that you want to create. And next I use a small piece of black clay and I marbled in a bit of white. So all you have to do for this is just kind of marble in the section. And you're just going to do that by mixing around the clay, twisting it in circles. You're not going to want to over mix it because you can actually mix the colors completely together, but um, you're going to want to mix it to where you can really see that nice white marbling and then again use your dental floss to create the slit you can also use a piece of thread whatever you have handy and then just bake your actual clay to the temperature on the packaging each clay is different so just make sure to check what the uh, temperature is and once they are completely done baking all you have to do is decorate them um, for some of them I just taped them off and added a bit of gold paint to the outside edges and then I finished them off with a nice coat of glossy Mod Podge Oh my gosh, guys, this project's taking me back to memory lane. I did this one so long ago, but it's still such a good idea. So I'm using some Quick Crete Fast Setting Concrete Mix, only legit like 5 to $10 at the hardware store, and I'm scooping some of it out, and then I'm going to be mixing it with um, a good amount of water. You kind of have to eyeball it to create a nice consistency of concrete to water ratio. And then what I'm doing is I'm pouring it into a foam cup. I just find that the foam cup was a great way to uh, get a nice clean finish on the concrete, and I'm pressing inside side of it a little shot glass one of those little solo shot glasses because I want an area for a tea light to go so as you press these little cups in it's actually going to need to have some weight on the inside of the cup because it's going to want to actually pop back out so I left these outside to dry and then once they were completely dry you can remove that inside solo cup and then you can cut away the outside foam cup and I just found this to be the easiest way to actually create these. And they legit look like they cost so much in the end, but they were actually super, super affordable and easy to create. I went in with a bit of sandpaper to sand down any rough or harsh edges. And then I also did do a little bit of painting. I used some painter's tape to create a nice little like silver chrome effect on these. I love the way they turned out, but you can also do this with a color. Um, you can do it with a white or a cream to create kind of a farmhouse vibe, whatever you want to go for. But these are your finished off little tea light holders. You just love to do it. I'll always get caught. Okay, now we're getting to a bit of woodworking, and typically I would leave this to Rachel Metz, but I guess two and a half years ago, I just decided I wanted to do it myself. I was feeling ambitious, and it's also so weird, you guys, to see myself without tattoos, like look at myself. I was a little pure innocent child, and now I am just... I mean, I guess I am still pure and sent. Anyways, I'm starting off by taking the longer sections of the wood, which are four foot long sections. I had two of them, and I'm just going to be creating two sections on these wood pieces where I want to add the shelves. So I'm marking those spots, and I'm pre-hammering in the nails. Typically, you probably would want to use screws for this, but back in the day, I don't think I had a screwdriver, so I actually just used nails, and I'm nailing these two 16-inch pieces of wood. And by the way, guys, these are a one by four piece of wood, if you are curious. I'm I think they're like a piece of pine or something, but I'm just creating a, a leaning shelf that was super, super affordable to recreate. Um, it's just going to hold some minimal items on there, so it doesn't have to be too secure. I feel like that wasn't the best voiceover, but I think you guys kind of got the idea. I just hammered the shelves in there. There's no place on earth I'd rather be. Clearly, I loved concrete, but this project actually turned out amazing. I still own this to this day. So what I'm starting off with is I'm mixing up some concrete mix in a bucket, just same as we created those tea light holders earlier to create a nice consistency. And I'm actually pouring it into like a Quaker Oats container, or not even Quaker. I guess this is an off-brand oat container, but it worked perfectly. So what I'm doing is I'm putting inside this paper mache cone, which I got at Michael's. I'm not sure what it's meant for, but once it is completely dry, you can cut away this cardboard element and you can really use anything to mold concrete as long as it is easily being able to be cut away you don't want to use like a hard plastic or something because you're not going to be able to get it out and once you're done this is going to be creating a bottom heavy cement holder to display your jewelry on straight back to 
For this last project here, you are looking at a viral Pinterest project, you guys. This, if you search this on um, Pinterest, if you search minimal room decor, literally the photo of this project comes up absolutely everywhere. It's crazy and it's simple. So all I had to do was I got three different Dollar Tree uh, little vases and I cut off a little bit of hemp cording, wrapped it around the neck of the jar multiple times, and then also left a long tail, which I then created a loop for hanging. So this is kind of what it looks like. You just wrap it around the neck of the jar a couple of times to kind of give it a rustic look, tie off the excess, and then I liked to stagger the lengths of the actual string that's going to hold this to the wall. So I did it to three different vases of different sizes, but you're going to want to make sure that your kind of um, glass vase has a lip on it, and then you can go ahead and stagger them on the wall as shown here. You can input your plants. I just used some faux ones for this project. Super, super cute. You can put them in there and change them out whenever you please, and that finishes off your little wall hanging. Just woke up to the sound of you